What's up guys, I'm Jeff, the founder of Worldwide Cyclery, and today we're gonna to be talking about coil shocks versus air shocks. It's really not that complicated of a topic. We could probably finish it here in a few seconds. This one has air. This has like a uh, circular boing, boing, boing. Well, as of recently, maybe the last couple years or so, coil shocks seem to be making a comeback and in particular on trail and enduro bikes, which is a bit unusual because uh, they used to be kind of exclusively on downhill bikes. So a lot more people are, are trying them out on trail and enduro bikes. A lot of the manufacturers are making them in sizes available for trail or enduro bikes, and some people absolutely love them. So uh, we're gonna dive into a little bit of what makes them different than an air shock if you're considering going coil. Well, let's just talk about some of the very obvious things right away. Coil shocks are way heavier. Um, they are less tunable. You don't have air volume spacers, which you typically do in air shocks these days, which is really nice. Um, they're harder to deal with as far as like, you know, if you're, you gotta change your spring. If like you're, you sell the shock or you're buying a coil shock, you gotta figure out what spring you need. That's totally dependent on your bike's leverage ratio and your body weight um, and the shock. I mean, it's just a little bit harder to deal with. So there's some cons to it. There's usually less size options. Um, they usually are making them only in like sort of larger shocks because again, they were typically for downhill bikes. They sort of spread into trail and enduro bikes, but they don't really make coil shocks for smaller shock eye to eyes. Um, so those are some of the cons to coil shocks. What are some of the pros to coil shocks? Well, they're definitely more supple. There's less friction. You can tell right off the bat just the amount of um, contact in the seal head on an air shock versus a coil shock. Coil shock's got way less, therefore it's typically way more supple. So that like off the top supple feeling is great on a coil shock, it makes it feel a lot more planted in a lot more scenarios. Um, that makes it more better small bump sensitivity, right? So that sort of like high speed chattery stuff um, is, is off, awesome on a uh, coil shock. Um, coil shocks, uh, you don't have to service them quite as often. Usually air shocks, you need to service them more often. Um, just again, because there's more friction there, the seals wear out more, um, it's more exposed. There's sort of a number of reasons there, but coil shocks are typically um, a lot more durable in that sense. You just don't have to service them as often, which is pretty cool. Um, those, so those are some of the main pros and cons between coil and air that are uh, known long-term things. Why would you go with one over the other and why are a lot of people doing that? Um, a lot of that boils back down to, uh, to preference and people testing out a coil or riding their buddy's bike with a coil shock and going, wow, that felt amazing. And again, where coil shocks really shine is um, they're, they're typically more linear, right? So what I mean by that is they like go through the travel um, without ramping up and getting really uh, stiff at the end. Uh, it brings me to another point there is coil shocks are just by nature more linear. So it might actually not work on your bike. Certain bikes, the way the leverage ratio works on the bike of the suspension might just straight up be too linear that if you put a coil shock on, it's gonna wanna just blow through the travel all the way and you're gonna bottom out all the time. And you might have, that bike probably has an air shock that's specifically tuned for that bike from the manufacturer that has a lot of progression to it to prevent that. So keep that in mind, make sure, you know, talk to the manufacturer of your bike or talk to someone like us um, that's sort of knowledgeable on the topic and make sure that your bike does work with a coil shock if you're considering it. Um, there is some fancier new things, MRP. I don't know if they've released them yet or maybe they have, but they're uh, like progressive springs you can put on coil shocks. That's a super interesting idea. Um, push, I don't know if you guys have heard of Push Industries. They make, I think, the most expensive coil shock in existence, the 11.6. That thing is amazing. We love selling those. They're custom spec to the bike and to the rider, and uh, they solve all of those problems as far as too linear, too progressive, regression, Push just literally takes the bike and the rider and custom builds a shock for you. Um, you pay for it, it's expensive. But everyone we've ever sold, people are absolutely stoked on those things, so that's cool right there. Um, but there's tons of other coil shocks that are also amazing. Uh, Can Creek double barrel uh, coil inline. Um, and then here we have right here is a Can Creek double barrel air inline. That's a bit of a mouthful. That's what she said. That's my joke, damn it, Dwight. Um, those shocks are both awesome and I've been riding them back to back. That's what she said. <laughs> on this bike and testing them out. Um, it's really interesting. Air shocks have come a long way. In the past, coil shocks were just by far and away, they felt so much better. They were so much more supple and planted and they just were amazing. 
and air shocks were awful. They were, you know, you either bought them out all the time um, or you'd put so much air in them, you'd lose, you'd have no small bump sensitivity, but then you wouldn't bottom out. They just kind of sucked. Well, air shocks have more or less like sort of caught up in past coil shocks in that sense. Um, they've invented, uh, you know, multiple air chambers for coil sh or for air shocks. Uh, they've invented volume spacers to make them more progressive so you can get crazy tuning there. Uh, a lot of technology has happened in air shocks um, that have made them really compete and in many cases be better than a coil shock. Um, coil shocks have also had a little bit of uh, evolution to them as well in the last few years. Cane Creek's been one of the companies for the longest time that's had an insane amount of adjustability on their coil shocks. Um, high and low speed rebound, high and low speed compression, and you have an actual climb switch right on the coil shock. So that's a pretty new thing that a lot of coil shocks didn't have. Cane Creek is one of the first brands to come out with a shock, a coil shock that didn't have an actual oil reservoir. Um, so it had all those same good advantages, but you could fit it on a lot more bikes because a lot of trail bikes couldn't fit that extra oil reservoir on there that a downhill bike was sort of engineered around. So, um, you know, coil shocks are, are by far and away, they feel amazing. And where they excel over an air shock is that small bump sensitivity still. And it feels to me, you know, depending on your bike, right? Most bikes are gonna ramp up towards the end. Some are more gradual than others. So a lot of how a coil shock feels depends on your bike and the exact leverage ratio. So again, I recommend really talking to the manufacturer of your bike if you're considering putting a coil shock on it. See if other people are doing that on the same model bike. Um, talk to the brand, talk to a good shop, talk to us, we're happy to help with that sort of thing as well. But on certain bikes, coil shocks can really feel amazing where if the bike's got some progressiveness to it, the coil shock's not gonna feel too linear. It's gonna still have some ramp up towards the end so you don't bottom it out all the time. And they do feel more um, supple off the top, more planted. And a good example is like um, sort of a high speed off camber turn or just like a high speed corner where you're bouncing up and down. Um, that's where a coil shock is gonna like really just feel planted and stuck to the ground and have a ton of traction. And an air shock, because it has more like mid-stroke um, support, you could say, is gonna, is gonna wanna give more feedback to the bike there. Um, where a coil shock's gonna shine and feel planted there. So my bike currently, what I've been riding, um, I have an MRP ribbon coil fork and then the uh, Kane Creek double barrel coil on the back. So it's just coil front and rear right now. And it's impressive. I mean, it's super planted. It's definitely heavier than when I had air suspension front and rear, which I don't like. I kind of like a light bike, but personal preference there. Um, Rocky, rough stuff, it's crazy planted, it's really nice. Um, it's definitely more linear, meaning I'm bottoming it out more. When I'm hitting jumps and drops and big G outs, I just can't get it quite as progressive as I can um, running air suspension. So pro and con right there. Um, and it depends on the rider, right? Because if you as a rider are riding a lot of uh, high speed, rocky, rough stuff, um, you might really enjoy coil suspension. If you're doing a lot more jumps or G outs, or you notice yourself just bottoming out pretty often and your suspension's as you know tuned and as stiff as it should be properly, um, you know, then air just might be the way to go. Um, and again, factor in weight too, right? Um, weight makes a big difference. But I think the reason coil shocks have started making a comeback is because people slap them on their bike they get that small bump absorption, that planted stable feeling, and they're addicted to it and they wanna stick with it. And it is pretty noticeable and pretty cool. And you can get the same thing with a coil fork. There's not as many of them in the trail market. Even the downhill forks now are almost all air. But coil suspension in general just has a totally different feel to it in, in the sense of like how it's more linear um, and how it's more supple than air suspension would. Um, you know, those are some of the main things. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too long on that topic, but there's a lot to it. A lot of it, again, boils back down to um, will it work on your bike? Does it make sense for your bike to run a coil shock? And then are you looking for that supple feeling? Because again, that supple feeling actually kind of makes your bike you know, not pedal as well, because it's it's crazy supple off the top, right? That's why Cane Creek has the climb switch on their coil shocks, um, which is a really cool feature. Uh, love that. And uh, yeah, that's that's sort of the, the general differences, pros and cons between air shocks and coil shocks. Let us know in the comments what you guys have. If you've got an air shock and you rode it for a long time, then you switched to coil. We'd love to hear your story around that and sort of what you feel like works best for you. Uh, let us know if you're riding a Push 11.6 or any of these Cane Creek shocks because these things have been pretty impressive for us to test out and, and uh, get some time on. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.
that's kind of what I was going for. This is missing a fucking air valve cap, and I can't take it. What? This is missing an air valve cap, and I can't stand it. And I saw it there the other day. What's still licking shit lately? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>